Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're gonna go over part two and wrap up my thoughts on the brand new GHL Ion Director. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And I know a number of you have been very patiently waiting for part two of this video to come out where I go over my final thoughts and findings on the GHL Ion Director. If you're yet to watch part one, I recommend I'll put a little card up here somewhere for you to go back and check that video out or put a link in the uh, description below where I went over some of the uh, setup uh, oddities, things like uh, having to set it up and wait 24 hours or, or have a probe soak for an hour or two in some water and some odd things like that. And then into the whole slew of network issues that I faced, which in fairness could well just be my network. I know networks are particularly uh, unique things and they do differ from house to house. So I don't wanna say that that is entirely GHL's fault. Could well and truly be my network set up, but uh, the setup procedure as a whole was fairly um, unusual and, and fairly complex, but um, I guess people want to know that once you get past that strange and somewhat difficult setup process, is the GHL Ion Director worth it? Because let's be honest, you only set the thing up once, well, hopefully once, and then after that, you're just gonna enjoy the uh, readings that it gives you, the automatic testing that it gives you from those parameters of uh, sodium, calcium, magnesium, nitrate, they're the four values it gives you at the moment. Hopefully it will expand to include some other values down the track. Phosphate in particular would be super helpful. In fact, I would swap out sodium for phosphate in a heartbeat if you could. The idea is once we get those results, we can then either make some actions based off those results or even better use the GHL ecosystem to then make changes on our behalf for that fully automated system. So you can see that your uh, magnesium is a bit low, increase the dosage of magnesium or your magnesium is a bit high, stop the dosage of magnesium, et cetera, et cetera. Or even something like turn up water changes or turn off water changes, various activities like that would all be possible in theory based on the uh, ion director's results. Well, I guess before we get to the level of that kind of automation, we need to first of all be able to get the results and then trust the results before we can act on the results. And that's what I wanna cover in this video here because once I spent a week getting that uh, Ion Director set up and finally got it connected to my network and to the internet and to the MyGHL cloud so it would actually store the results in the history for me, I then let it run in my tank for quite some time and I'm ready to share the results with you now. So perhaps it'd be best if we jumped onto the uh, MyGHL website, I'll run you through all of the results there and we can make some uh, conclusions together. All right, here we are in my GHL with the roughly the month that I had this unit operational. And um, whilst I will say that the lines here are pretty squiggly, there are actually a few patches of some consistency. You look at this line here, these sort of trends here, this, this main section here, apart from uh, the purple, which is nitrate, which is spiking like a roller coaster. And even to a lesser degree over here, where I was doing some absolute rapid testing, the results were kind of consistent again, except for nitrate, which lucky look here, we went from zero nitrate to 13 to 19 to 50, all in the space of a day, which, um, was seemingly a little bit much, especially when I'm gonna tell you something uh, interesting, which is from this point here, from the 12th of April in the morning, I actually took the water supply line out of my tank. I got a bucket of water and put the water supply line in there. So I was expecting if there were any fluctuations in my tank at all, which I was seeing over here, all sorts of sp spikes and peaks and troughs, things like, uh, what do we got here? Calcium went from 399, at, uh, in the morning of Friday the 8th, then it dropped to 388. It was consistent there, 388, 389, three hours between, and then uh, three hours later it went to uh, 328 um, mg slash L and continued downwards from there down to 318 and then decided to shoot back up to 386. Very uh, inconsistent data, but yeah, from this point in time here, from the 12th of April, I actually took the uh, line out of the tank. I did use the tank water though. I grabbed a bucket of tank water and put it in there and I conveniently sent off a Triton ICP test at, of that same water sample. Now things get a little bit interesting here because Triton obviously can test all of these parameters except for nitrate. I did take a, a number of HANA instruments, uh, high range granted, nitrate tests uh, of the water and every single time it came up between 1.3 and 1.8. 
Um, and we're talking across uh, the span of a week, about 10 tests there. So I'm quite confident that it's gonna be around about 1.5. You can see here we're reporting it, um, well, we go from uh, three, <laughs> then we go up to uh, 47, then we come to 15, stay comfortable at 15, then we go 32, then we go down and then here it goes crazy. We shoot back up to 50 and it just spikes all over the place. But apart from that, apart from nitrate, these other lines look fairly consistent apart from some sort of weird happening here, which I'm gonna assume was potentially some bubbles in the line, but uh, these lines here are fairly consistent. Let's see if they are somewhere near the mark. Now, when we look at uh, my Triton ICP test from, actually it was from this point here that we uh, took the water sample out of a bucket. My Triton ICP came back at 395 ppm, which you can see here at 393, uh, no, where are we? Calcium's at 388 in the top there. It is the yellow line. We come across, we go to 395, exactly what Triton saw. Come across, we go to 390, not that much of a drop. I mean, I'm happy with uh, that sort of percentage swing. Then we do go to 404, a little bit higher, but it does come back down to 394. So across that short span there, calcium appeared to report fairly accurately. It then does just bomb for some reason down here to 350 um, and goes again to 351 and then shoots up to 389 and things go all over the place, back up to 400 over here. So I guess two thirds of the tests there were um, accurate and consistent. Remembering again, this was in a sample bucket of water. Um, so those results should have been rock steady. There was no uh, drain water going into that bucket. I made sure it was, a, it was a 20 liter bucket. So there was plenty of sample there. I made sure it was consistent, didn't get contaminated with anything at all. If we look at the next value, magnesium came back on my um, Triton ICP as 1358. Here you can see we're reading 1291. Now this is the, uh, I guess, the coral colored line, the pinkish one. And you'll see it's fairly consistent. We're hovering, well, drops a bit there. We go from 1290 to 1247, 1247, back up to 1270. And then again, over here, it goes a little bit crazy. It is consistently reading a bit lower than what Triton ICP read, but um, it's fairly consistent again till it goes over here. And then when we go back into this patch here, it's fairly consistent, but again, reading low. Mid 1200s instead of uh, mid 1300s, which I don't know, 100 ppm there is a little bit concerning. Move on to potassium next from the uh, 12th here. Potassium read on the Triton ICP is 377. The uh, the ion director read that as 395, uh, 393, 385, 385. This is the green line, by the way. Um, very consistent, but um, a touch high, not too bad. I'd, I'd be happy with that. Um, but then again, yeah, we do get some weird inconsistencies here where it bounces all over the place, it goes as low as 370 and as high as uh, 400, all while still sucking from a bucket of water. And then last but not least, sodium. Uh, which uh, go back to the 12th here. Uh, on the uh, Triton ICP read as 10,588. Here we've got 10,291. This is the uh, red line. You can see it's fairly consistent. Um, it's reading low 10,000s and then it does have a little spike here. It is interesting. It's obviously some weird tests here because some of the results absolutely bomb or some of them shoot up. So some sort of inconsistent testing there, but sodium seemed to be fairly consistent at least, if not accurate but at least consistent for the most part. Now, just to throw an extra spanner in the works, there is one extra frustration. You will notice here that this, some of these dots here are very close together. And then we have the big span to the next one, middle span, middle span, and then come over here. You can see the frequency of the dots here. Now, throughout this entire period, we'll see the difference of time here. We go from 1.24 p.m., 4.24 p.m. So these tests are all three hours apart. I kept that same testing consistency throughout this entire period here. So there should be a test every three hours. However, more often than not, and you can see in this period here, we go from, uh, what have we got, 7.24 a.m. And then it's an entire day. We're talking 13th of April to the 14th of April, same time the next day, we've got a relatively short one there. It goes to one o'clock in the afternoon and then till 10.30 the next night. Every one of those tests in the three hour period in between there, the ion director decided they were no good, so it disposed of the results. It was still consuming the uh, reagent during that time, but it would just tell me that the uh, probe was not accurate or it was not effective. It gave me a, a, a value that I'll put on screen now to say that uh, sensor performance was not accurate and it would dispose of the results, which I don't know, it's kind of frustrating because uh, if you were wanting to base your uh, dosing off this, 
and you go a day and a half between uh, between readings, it, it does sort of get to the point where it starts to defeat the purpose of having an automated tester doing tests every three hours. Actually, just one last thing before we close this graph up, you'll notice it gives you the max and minimum values and the average down the bottom here. If I reduce this down, if it'll let me bring that into halfway between, that's gonna be the 12th and it can run all the way through, that's fine. That's the period of time that, um, that uh, the, the feed line was inside the uh, bucket of water. So we should see beautiful straight lines like they are here. They're mostly straight, but then this bouncing business up and down and all over the place, you can see the average is going between the, or the, the minimum zero to 50, um, nine and a half to almost, well, 10 and three quarters, 344 to 400, uh, 1090 on magnesium to 1350 and uh, 335 to 405 on calcium. It's just a little bit too much variation, which leads me to feel at this point in time that either uh, the sensor needs to be a little bit more robust so that it doesn't get these obscure uh, readings. And don't forget, this is just the readings it's deemed is successful. There's a huge number of tests in between each of these dots that it uh, went about its business and did the test and went, no, nope, it's not right, discard the data. So these are just the results the device itself thinks are suitable. Um, it's not quite there yet. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my own personal overview of the GHL Ion Director. Now, I do want to absolutely explicitly say that that is my personal opinion on it with my own personal experience. Your mileage may differ. It could well be that my network was an absolute pain to get this device set, set up. And in your instance, it may just connect with a, a click of your fingers. It may also be that the setup on my tank wasn't quite right for whatever reason, and the results were a little bit skewed because of that could well be on your tank it'll be an absolute perfect device and you can set your entire ghl automations and uh, ecosystem all based off that iron probe but my job here is not to tell you about what your experience may be it's only to tell you about what my experience was like and unfortunately whilst i do feel like the ghl ion probe or at least probe testing in general, not some sort of weird alien thing, but uh, non-tritation based testing, but an actual ion probe or similar, that tests a slew of parameters based off the same water sample. I do feel like it is the future, but unfortunately based off my experience in this test here, I don't think it's the present. I feel like we're just a bit too far off. The money that this ion director cost coupled with the lack of results that the probe actually decided were good enough, coupled with once it did actually decide those results were good enough, the amount they varied, particularly when I had that sample in a bucket of water, just left me feeling like it was something that um, wasn't going to take any burden off me at all. I would still continually be doing manual testing to see whether those results were accurate before I based any changes to my tank off those results, which kind of defeats the purpose. But again, your mileage may vary. And I do feel like this is only the start of a big improvement in the world of reef automated testing. It's kind of like when uh, people were using typewriters and the first computer came along, people all joked about it because it was massive. It took up a whole room. It cost as much as a whole building. And um, it wasn't that quick. Someone could type something quicker on a typewriter. We all know how that story went. The typewriter is long gone, dead, buried, and the computer has absolutely taken over. So I do feel like the Ion Probe is on the right path. I do just feel like it has a lot of work to go before it gets to the point where it's gonna find its way into the majority of reefers' tanks. Anyway, guys, I'll wrap the video up there. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear your experiences or your thoughts on the GHL Ion Director, because like I said, this was just my experience. So um, please do share your thoughts below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there. So if you are wanting to get hold of me, it is the best place to do so. Other than that, guys, till next time, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.